Zot or Valleybot are great libraries to validate your objects against the schema. But one of the most awesome features of these two libraries is heavily underused. In this video, we will discover how we can use brand to also properly type our primitives like strings or numbers and make our code much more type safe and easier to reason about. Let's get started. So for everyone who has already used SOT, this code snippet should look quite familiar. We have two really simple schemas here, one for a string which has to be an email and one for a string which has to be a UUID. What we are then doing is we have these two variables, email and ID, and we are passing these two variables to our email and UUID schema and are checking if they are a valid email or a valid UUID. We then pass these two values to our send email function. So let's take a closer look into the send email function. The first argument here is a string. We we call it ID and the second one also is a string and we call it email. Now we are using the ID argument here to call our logit function and this just takes a normal string. Now the second argument of course our email we will use to send the real email. But we have some issues with this send email here. The first thing is what we of course can do is we can use send email and we can pass any string we want. We can use totally not an ID and totally not an email and TypeScript doesn't stop us from doing that because any two strings are allowed. But there is another thing which is also dangerous, the order of the arguments. Because we can see here valid email and valid UUID are in the wrong order. Valid UUID should be the first argument and valid email should be the second argument. But there is no way that TypeScript can know that because for TypeScript these are just two strings. So we have these two issues, right? The ordering problem and also that we are allowed to pass any string to this send email function. And this is exactly where we can use branded types. Before we add the branded types, let's first infer the email and UUID type from our email and UUID schema. So we create a new type here and I call this email and I use sort infer and I use type of email schema to get the type of our schema here. Now let's check the type here. We can see this is a little bit disappointing. It's just a normal string. But of course it is because there is no built-in email type in TypeScript. This is just a normal string here. Now let's do the same here for our UUID and we use sort infer and we also use type of UUID schema. But of course, this currently also is just a string. But before we now change something in our schema here, let's just use these two types. So in our send email, this is no longer a string. This is a UUID and the email here is no longer a string. It is an email. Now you can see nothing really changed, but here is where we can now use the brand function from Zot. We just call brand on our sot string. And this takes an argument and you can pass in anything you want for this argument, any string. Now, what I like to do is I like to call this brand the same as our schema here. So I call this email and we do the same for our UUID. We call brand here and I pass UUID as a string. Now, maybe you have already spotted it. Line 18 and 19 does no longer compile. And you also maybe already spotted that the type here has changed. Now, the email type here is no longer just a normal string, it is an intersection type of string and sort brand email. And something similar happens to UUID here. This is now an intersection type of string and C brand UUID. Now, if you're interested in an in-depth video about how branded types work internally, I already did a video about this. You can find it in the info box and in the description below. And I will not go into details, but in the other video, I will show you exactly how you can create your own branded types if you are not using Zot or, for example, Valleybot. But let's now go back into our send email errors we have here. Let's hover over our valid email and let's see what the issue with this is. Type string brand email is not assignable to type brand user. UID. Types of property brand are incompatible. Now, what is happening here? We are telling TypeScript that now this string here, which is created from our email schema, is not just a normal string, but it is a more restricted kind of string. And this happens by using this brand property, because we are basically adding one additional property to our string so that TypeScript can differentiate between different kind of strings. And this is exactly why now this code is no longer compiling, because we are telling TypeScript that the first argument has to have this brand of UUID 
and the second one has to have this brand of email. But the first one here currently has only the branding for email and it is lacking this branding for UUID. Now let's see what happens when we change the order, when we use valid UUID as a first argument and valid email as a second argument. This now compiles fine. Now we will take a look on line 19 because this of course also is no longer compiling because if I hover over this, we can see string is not assignable to type brand UUID because the string is lacking the brand properly entirely. Here on line 18, we had the issue that the ordering was wrong, but a string here we pass in here doesn't have either the brand property for email or UUID. ID. So because of that, we are no longer allowed to pass any string to this function, but we are only allowed to pass strings to this function, which were already parsed successfully. And in my opinion, this is huge because let's think in what this will help us to do. We can create schemas for primitives, like for strings or for numbers. We can then restrict them using the sort types. And then at the end, we just call brand on it. And we can make sure that everywhere we are using the type we infer from the schema, that we only get a string which was parsed from sort before. There is no way that the send email function can get called with a string which is not a result of sort parsing this string. Now, of course, you can also nest this in a sort object and can use it for one of its properties, but I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So I hope you can also see the huge advantage by using this brand function here, because now when you're using sort or valleybot, I will show you a valleybot example in a second. You will no longer have this uncertainty when you create functions, for example, which take primitives. Now, of course, you are not restricted to only using string. You can, for example, say you create an integer schema and we use sort number here and we then call integer. And when we now would create a type for this and we use sort.infer and we pass our type of integer schema, of course, here currently, this would also just be a number. But we can simply add the brand property to it also and we call it integer. And now everywhere we use this integer type in a function, we can be sure that the number we are passing has to be an integer because otherwise we would not be able to pass it to this function. So I use this on a daily basis almost everywhere I'm using Zot because this makes it so much easier to reason about your code. Because when we scroll down again to this send email function, this is completely clear what we are expecting here. And in here, we don't have to do any checks if this email is a valid email or if this ID is a valid UUID. We can be sure that we can only pass valid UUID or email strings in there. Now, as already mentioned, this of course also works for Valleybot. So let me show you the example in Valleybot. For this, I will switch over to the Valleybot example here. Now, as you can see here, this is extremely similar to Sort. We are just calling the brand function from Valleybot and we are passing the email UUID or integer string here. And we then use the infer output type function to get the type for our email, which is now an intersection of string and this valleybot branded type here. And we can see here, this works exactly the same. It only works when we put the arguments in the correct order. So if I remove the valid UUID as a first argument and put it as a second one, we can see this will no longer compile. And of course you can no longer pass a simple string to the send email function, which was not parsed before by valleybot. Now I am highly encouraging you to try this if you're using sort or valleybot. But if you are not using one of these two libraries, but you have created your own validation library or you are doing this in your own code instead, please check the video in the info box or in the description below where I will show you exactly how you can create your own branded types. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something useful today. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date for the newest TypeScript stuff. And also let me know in the comments what kind of topics you'd like to have covered in future videos. See you in the next one. Bye.